What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WCW moments that were actually real. Now, I didn't watch too much of WCW growing up. You know, I checked it out here and there. I was more of a Monday Night Raw person. Whenever I, whenever I was able to, I didn't really have cable growing up. I would have to go to my cousin's house and stuff like that to actually check out, you know, Monday Night Raw or I would be told what happened. But you know i did you know i was able to catch some wcw you know episodes and stuff like that and some of the you know iconic moments so we're gonna check out some of these moments that actually ended up being real you know and i, I want to see how this played out appreciate all the love support y'all showing on channel let's get right into it man 10 wcw moments that were real be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos number 10 the loose cannon goes too far the airing a clash of champions 32 in 1996 was mostly known for a real life interaction between brian pillman and bobby heenan during pillman's match with fellow legend eddie guerrero pillman would grab heenan's neck the idea was that this would be in line with pillman's gimmick and persona of the respective time but the issue with this moment was that Heenan had just had neck surgery, and nobody should have been touching Heenan, yet Pillman clearly didn't receive the memo. Heenan quite rightly verbally snapped at Pillman, as he was baffled as to why Pillman would put his hands on him in such a drastic manner. Heenan would apologize for his cursing, yet the fans were firmly on the side of Heenan, mm. as he was justified in reacting in the manner he did. Heenan would claim that he initially thought it was a fan that was attacking him. However, ultimately, the blame falls on WCW management for not making all talent aware that Heenan wasn't to be involved in any physicality. Oh, Number 9. Okay. The Horse Turns Heel The final years of WCW programming were filled with wild and unscripted moments, and in 2000 on Thunder, one of the most unintentionally humorous real-life incidents went down. Terry Funk would take on Chris Candido in a hardcore match, and the match eventually ended up in a horse table. Upon entering this stable, the horse who was in close proximity wasn't happy that two wrestlers had just entered into his territory, so the horse proceeded to kick the legendary Funk oh! right in the head. Hilariously, Funk decided to verbally go off on the horse. Despite WCW booking various nonsensical angles during this time, it was a huge surprise that Vince Russo didn't endeavor to book a program between Funk and the dastardly horse. Number 8. Hey, that... That can definitely be very dangerous because they can kick you with a lot of force and a lot of power. So they was like, hey, bro, horse was like, hey, get this, get this BS out of here. I'm chilling. Y'all came into my stable doing this nonsense. Get, get, get on out of here. <laughs> Scott Steiner calls out DDP. A Scott Steiner had a reputation for being one of the most unpredictable wrestlers in WCW in the early 2000s. Steiner's promos were often confusing as he was prone to going <laughs> off on tangents and he would randomly rant about topics that had nothing to do with his respective feud. In one promo on WCW television, Steiner would bury Kimberly and Diamond Dallas Page, and Steiner's beef with the duo was down to Kimberly, who was DDP's wife, reporting Sonny to WCW management. The issue in question related to drugs in the locker room, yet the specific details seem to change based on who shares their account of the story. Most real-life moments in WCW lacked any consequences, however this time DDP took action. When Steiner came back through the curtain following the shoot promo, DDP would confront Steiner and a physical confrontation of ensued. Course. Number 7, of Hulk course. Hogan's... <laughs> like, what? What you say? What you say about my wife? What you... What's up? We don't... That's that's how you hash it out. What's up? That wasn't even supposed to uh, be part of the show. What's up? We got we got an issue now. So how are we gonna solve it? All right, we're gonna solve it with fisticuffs. <laughs> Real frustration. And there's no denying that Hulk Hogan had a major influence on the success of WCW in the 90s. However, despite the success, Hogan's political plays and creative sabotage often came to the forefront and often overshadowed anything Hogan did in the ring. Back in 1995, Hogan was part of the World War III match at the inaugural World War III pay-per-view event. The match would be won by Randy Savage, and Savage would be crowned as the new WCW champion. This wasn't to be Hogan's night, yet the Hulkster just couldn't resist making the match about himself. In an unscripted moment, Hogan would begin to protest that he was unfairly eliminated, and the pay-per-view would literally go off the air with Hogan complaining about how the match went down. And there was no need for Hogan to act in such an unprofessional manner. It made Sound him look right. extremely petty, and it was evidence that Savage was uncomfortable with Hogan's real-life temper tantrum. Number 6. Of Bobby course. Heenan has had it. Bobby the Brain Heenan was an outstanding pro wrestling manager, and a similar sentiment can be shared when it came to his performance as a color commentator. 
Heenan had the ability to get the heel wrestlers over without taking anything away from the babyfaces, yet during the final few years of his run in WCW, it became apparent that Heenan, just like the fans, had simply had enough. Heenan was never one to hide his emotion, and at the 1999 uncensored pay-per-view, Heenan decided to literally turn his back to the camera. Tony Schiavone and Mike Tanay were discussing the live pay-per-view broadcast, and Heenan decided to turn his chair around and face the crowd. Shivani would remind Heenan that he gets paid to call the show, and Heenan responded by saying, I don't get paid to be talked to like this, and I can sit whichever way I want. Hey Heenan would go on to call his WCW run the worst six years of his life, and he's always had extremely negative thoughts on Shivani as a human being. Damn. Number 5. Kevin Nash Doesn't Care when Scott Hall was let go from WCW in 2000, it became a WCW mandate that Hall wasn't to be referenced directly or indirectly on WCW television. However, when it came to Kevin Nash, who was Hall's best friend, he decided to outright ignore this directive. Nash just couldn't resist going off script and mentioning Hall in his promos became common practice for the former world champion. In one sit-down interview on WCW Thunder in late 2000, Nash spent the majority of the interview name-dropping Hall and referencing him. In a bizarre move which highlighted the lack of focus of WCW management at the time, they decided to air the pre-recorded interview, albeit with several instances of muting the audio when Hall was mentioned. That would have made more sense to just not air the segment entirely as it led to more questions than answers, and it yeah. could have easily been inferred that WCW were running an angle, but that simply wasn't the case. Number 4. Scott Steiner Shoots on Ric Flair the issues between Scott Steiner and Ric Flair were well documented, and in 2000 on WCW TV, Steiner decided it was time he aired the dirty laundry between the two wrestlers. In an now infamous promo, Steiner completely buried Flair with lines such as, Now last week I was watching TV and I watched a 53 year old man come out here who has more loose skin than a sharp a puppy come out Damn. here and say he's still the man. I seen Ric Flair, number two, the nature boy, come out here who's been the butt end of all the jokes because he's supposed to be the limousine riding jet flying son of a gun, but I'm saying one time you should take a cab and use that money <laughs> to fix your crooked yellow teeth. Damn. In a rare move, WCW would punish Steiner for going off script, and according to JJ Dillon during an appearance on the list in Your Boy, Steiner wasn't exactly thrilled with his suspension. It was embarrassing for Rick. It was embarrassing for me because Scott went out there with no prior warning and just made what he said very, very personal. I Damn. called Scott on it, and he's very high strung, and of course, he took exception and he continued to prolong Flair backstage with me, and I said, Your personal views with Rick are personal with you and him, and live television when we have a storyline, that is not a place to carry on and air your personal opinions. Facts. Bill Bush was in charge of the company at the time, Eric Bischoff was on hiatus, so Bill's first impulse was to fire Scott, and then he had to deal with Brad Siegel, and the decision was to suspend Scott, I want to say two weeks without pay. Woo. Number three, a close shave. Yeah, man. You know, going out there trying to bury people because your your personal opinions it 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 always can lead to some some issues down the road. I mean, we've seen it recently with AEW and uh, Adam Page, him going out there and saying what he said essentially to kind of bury Punk. It was just one of those things like, what are you doing? That doesn't. What are you doing? Like that ain't. That's not how you make money. That's how you cause issues, so. WCW saw dollar signs when it came to Tank Abbott. However, Abbott is mostly known for the time he pulled out a real knife on pay-per-view. Abbott would take on Big Al at the 2000 Super the Bowl fuck? event, and Abbott would win the leather jacket on a pole match, and then he proceeded to pull a knife and place it at Big Al's throat. Abbott would declare that he could kill him before WCW cut away. Whoa. The commentary team had a difficult task in trying to logically explain what had just happened, and it became apparent that it was an unscripted moment when the commentary team tried to state that Abbott was trying to cut Big Al's beard. Number two, Randy Savage slaps Tory Wilson. Hey, what the hell's going on here, bro? That's, uh, hey, man. Hey, put that knife down so we can have a talk. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> In 1999, one of the most uncomfortable WCW segments of all time took place. In a backstage segment between Macho Man Randy Savage, Gorgeous George, and Tori Wilson, Savage went off script and legitimately slapped Wilson across the face. Why on earth Savage did this is anyone's guess, and some fans have theorized that it looked like Wilson broke character, and this evidently angered Savage so much that he slapped her across the face. Even if this was the case, nothing justifies this yeah. act from Savage, and it was without question a step too far. For sure. Number one, Goldberg knows best. It was often joked that the inmates were running the asylum in WCW, and a great example of this occurred in late 1999 on WCW Thunder. 
Goldberg was involved in a backstage segment where he would attack a limo with a metal uh -huh. pipe. The pipe was used to keep Goldberg safe, but for whatever reason, he decided to go off script and smash one of the windows with his arm. Oh. A piece of broken glass cut an artery in his arm, causing him to bleed, and this was one of the most gruesome injuries to ever occur on WCW TV. Appearing on Broken Skull Sessions, this is what the Hall of Famer had to say regarding the incident. Crazy, you know, I bro. mean, some things I may have taken personally. I made poor judgment because I was mad and I was opposed to grabbing a sledgehammer. I figured I'd use my own sledgehammer and just show how violently I can hit. Well, that was smart. Then I'm like, okay, this is live TV and I'm going to hit it again. And I hit it and I go through it like a cheese grater. And I look down and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Live TV, grab my hand, white limousine, go to the front. Great video. Great, great shock. Boom. Blood everywhere. I just, I went nuts. But there you have it, folks. 10 WCW. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely was uh, not the uh, smartest thing to do in that incident in that situation yeah definitely should have probably went with the the pipe there <laughs> but hey comment down below let me know some other wrestling related videos i want me to check out i definitely will appreciate all the love support y'all shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace